spoiler alert, this is one of the most fun books I've ever reviewed. In this episode of Erudite Magic, we are discussing Professor Richard Wiseman's Hocus Pocus, Magic, Mystery, and the Mind, a collection of magic-themed comic books. I mention magic in books, and of course that's what this channel is all about. But what's weird is that this book doesn't teach a single trick, and yet it's one of the most joyful celebrations of all things magical I've ever seen. In spite of not actually teaching any magic tricks, it does have several interactive magic tricks that you'll basically perform for yourself as you read through the book. Not to mention the whole thing is chock full of magic. Although the book was published by Vanishing Ink, it isn't your typical Vanishing Ink book, partly because these comic books have already been published, and this is simply a consolidation of all of them into one gorgeous hardback. I've mentioned it before, and I'll say it again, I work for Vanishing Ink now, so take this review with whatever grain of salt you'd like. But if you love graphic novels or comic books or even the idea of them, then keep watching to hear all of the details of what's inside this 175 page hardbound collection. After reading through it, it's easy for me to understand why this book was nominated for one of the most prestigious awards in the comic book industry. So what is it? What is this book? This is a collection of five previously released comic books by Professor Richard Wiseman and team. But exactly who is Richard Wiseman, you ask? If you're British, you probably already know who he is, but for the rest of us, you may want to know that he is a professor for the public understanding of psychology. He's a noted author, having written several pop psychology books, as well as over a hundred academic papers on the study of magic as it relates to psychology. That's right, he's also a magician and a member of the inner magic circle. But wait, there's more. Not only does he know all this stuff about magic and has the academic background, he's also an entertainer producing a YouTube channel with over 2.4 million followers. Come on guys, we're nowhere near that. Hit that subscribe button and tap like if you're enjoying this content. Where was I? Oh yeah, to produce these comic books, he had to team up with a group of graphic novelists who actually tweeted him with a question about how a magic trick worked. The whole story is in the book and I won't spoil it for you. Each one of those five comics contains three mini stories around a very specific theme. The themes in this collection are mind reading, seances, ghosts, prophecy, and of course levitation. But what's the comic about? It's part history, part skepticism. They're taking a peek behind the historical context of a lot of the phenomenon that they're writing about. For example, the history of spiritualism and the many fraudulent people who took advantage of the public. How the Fox sisters kind of kicked it all off with their surreptitious floor knocking that people attributed to the spirits. They progress on to the Davenport brothers with their kinky spirit cabinet concerts. Houdini himself even makes an appearance in the book with one of his lesser known but no less real sidekicks, Rose Mackenberg. The artist and Professor Wiseman also debunk some urban legends about animals that supposedly possessed paranormal abilities. I'm talking about characters like Paul, the psychic octopus, who correctly predicted the outcome of every 2010 World Cup game. And even Lady Wonder, the psychic horse, who could answer some of your questions when you spoke to her. I mentioned history, there's some history of magical apparatus, for example, how Pepper's ghost came to be a thing. And you'll also see many of the forms of levitation that have been performed by magicians. David Copperfield even makes an appearance in the book. One of the coolest parts though is that they explain how some of these phenomenon that people attribute to ghosts or spiritualism, how it actually works. What causes this sensation in haunted houses? By the way, it's a real thing that supposedly gives people a feeling of dread and can even cause objects in the house to mysteriously move. But not only are the subjects entertaining and interesting and you'll learn some things about the phenomenon that's going on around you and how the human mind interprets what it wants to believe. But to top it all off, the comic book format is a real joy for the subject. I mentioned the interactive magic that's in the book. There are a few tricks that are a little bit like the old Max Maven on TV type of effects where you're putting your finger on something and you're making some decisions and you end up where the book is predicting where you'll end up. It keeps the book fun and interactive in a way that most magic books can't. It allows the reader to enter a complete fantasy world created by Dr. Wiseman and his friends. 
There's even a little bit of a write-up about this towards the end of the book. A type of behind the scenes, if you will. How the comic book format lends itself to magic, but also competes with it at the same time. It's really fun to see magic portrayed in such a beautiful and publicly accessible format. And it's easy to see why this series was nominated for an Eisner Award. If you don't already know, the Eisners are essentially the Oscars for the comic book domain. And the Hocus Pocus comics were nominated for the best limited series. You might even be inspired by the story in the back about how one magician took the idea and the concept of the comic book and turned it into a magic-themed seance in Australia. At the end of the day, who do I think would enjoy this book? Well, if you are a magic lover or a comic book lover, you don't have to be both, but even one or the other, I think these are super colorful, very interesting. It's the perfect type of book that you can read a small amount of story and gain an appreciation for magic and what its secrets have kind of brought to the world when people want to attribute a supernatural cause to something that has a very natural and sometimes even devious cause, magic is able to break through that barrier and help explain the phenomenon. So if you're into those kind of stories, or just love a celebration of magic in a more publicly accessible format, then I highly recommend this book. It retails for about $50. It also makes a beautiful coffee table book. If you wanna leave this out, it's a really fun way to engage with the guests at your house and maybe broach the subject of magic. If you love beautiful magic books, rich with history about specific effects, be sure to check out this video about 100 years of sewing. And if you love books that are just filled with tricks, be sure to check out this video. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.